All right, welcome to the first recording session of the Through the Hidden Door podcast. To start with this is going to be the first actual play session. Before we start, I'm going to go through the group, have them describe their character, and maybe ask them a question to get you used to listen to their voices and recognizing who they are. To start with, Ryan, how about you introduce us to yourself by answering who is your favorite superhero and why? Oh yeah, I was supposed to think about that question. Um... Don't I was all the magic. I was all ready to uh, like answer what my character looked like, and I had picked out a superhero name now. Oh, but, uh, what's what's your name? The superhero name I picked was Nix. Oh. Nix, is that with like an X? Stevie Nix? Uh, with an X. Richard yeah. Nix. No. No. That's <laughs> not... <laughs> no. My superhero is now Richard Nixon. Carl <laughs> 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 Young. <laughs> Let's go again from the top. <laughs> That'll be a blooper. Ryan, how about you introduce yourself by answering who's your favorite superhero and why? Okay, I'm Ryan, my favorite superhero and or supervillain. Sure. Uh, I kind of want to just lean towards the Joker because he's a lot of fun. Um, I like Captain America out of the Marvel stuff. You only uh, have one Ryan. Scott looks so uh, disgusted. I like Captain America. Glare. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to sound everything out because he can't see it. <laughs> Evil stare at Ryan. Oh, All right. Boy. I like that one more. dumb Spider-Man villain. It's just like the void or something. He's Why do you just keep on like picking ones at random? Pick one. <laughs> one. Is that one? The spot? Don't just start How about Super Scroll because he's got all the powers? My, super, my favorite superhero is the Fantastic Four. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm down, everyone. Holster your bits. <laughs> the Fantastic Four. Ryan? <laughs> How about you now go on and... The X-Men. <laughs> How about... <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> the entire Marvel Not Captain Marvel, universe. like they're all of Marvel. Oh, my favorite superhero is Matter Eater Lad. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> no, Bruce Willis from Unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. no, no, no. Santa. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> I thought you were just about to unplug Ryan's mic. I thought that's what was happening. <laughs> How about we move forward to uh, who are you playing and what do they look like? Okay, so my character is Franklin Holmes. Like I said, his superhero name, which I now picked out, is Nix. He's a black guy, and when I say black, I've decided that he is utterly devoid of any sort of, like, he sucks in light because his power is power negation so. so so he's not african-american he's, he's literally black pitch he's black. literally he's pitch, yeah, black. pitch black okay mm -hmm. yeah. what color are his eyes i'm thinking white just, just kind of glowy white or Ooh. just white like eyes like white like no pupil or anything do they glow i'm thinking just plain old white but i not not that they glow because he's he sucks in all sorts of okay. they basically white glow because stuff. he's all nothing there Devoid so it's all. just like wait that's fair He's sort of oh, just like a shadow and or a silhouette that has clothes on it. The clothes being a sleeveless hoodie and obnoxious yoga pants. Like just yoga too pants. tight? No, I was, I was obnoxious as in like I'm tempted to put like a superhero on the yoga pants, but it's not him. I like the idea of obnoxious yoga pants. The fact yes, that it obnoxious would... yoga pants. I don't entirely know what's on them, but they're obnoxious. <laughs> Tie dye? I was I was kind of thinking maybe tie dye or like I said or just an image that's just repeated like the pink camo cats. It's just an entire cats. thing of cats. I could see cats. Like, cats can be obnoxious. just something dumb like that. <laughs> Space <be> cats. <laughs> and I think that's all for description. All right. Oh, I didn't really think of shoes. That's okay. Uh, I, I mean, was half tempted to do Crocs maybe. But... Oh, that would be really obnoxious. <laughs> 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 they socks. wouldn't stay on very. No with... toe shoes. That's what it was. Toe shoes. I was shoes. gonna go with toe shoes. Okay. With socks on. So it doesn't make any sense why they're still on? No, it's just yeah. too uncomfortable. Um, unless they're toe socks, they could be toe socks. That is true. <laughs> Stockings. <laughs> so, John, uh, yes. introduce yourself. Who are your? Who's your favorite superhero or villain and why? Okay. My name is John, and my favorite superhero would be Spider-Man because he has a lot of cool powers, and he's also really relatable in like going in debt and stuff like that. I think that's what makes him so cool because he does really cool stuff while still being a poor college student slash high school student. And then, so my, what my character looks like? Character, who are you playing what do they look like? Okay. My hero name would be Darkstar. His actual name is Dr. Carl Jung. He actually, he's close to graduating from college because he's super smart, still in high school age. Wait, what is he graduating with? Psychology. Okay. Uh, I, I was going to yeah. say, assume, yeah. assuming a doctorate, since yeah. he's already a doctor. Yeah. Well, and Carl Jung. 
I don't I haven't decided what like college he's going to. How he looks is he's gonna be about I'd say five ten, white, black hair, kind of scooted back, almost like a Superman cut, except not with a swirl. He has glasses, but his skin is cracked where it glows purple underneath the skin, and his eyes are always glowing purple. Ooh, one very bright and shining character, and then another character devoid of all lights. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? If that's all you have to say, then we can I'm move still, on. I'm still trying to think of his like hero costume. That's his like civilian costume. Sure. I should say what he normally wears is button-up shirt, collar, a vest, and khakis with dress shoes all the time. Professor. Yes, a doctor. <clears throat> Sounds good. So, Scott, how about you introduce yourself? Who's your favorite superhero or villain and why? Okay, I'm Scott. Favorite superhero <laughs> is probably gonna be Captain America. I have, I think the first comic book I ever had was of Captain America, and I've just loved every rendition of him, even the more modern ones, just what he stood for, where his origins, where he came from nothing, and it's just always appealed to me, and I like the righteous leader aspect of him, and fighting for justice just because. And America. And America. And the world. All right, so who are you playing for us, souls. and what do they look like? So I am playing the hero role called the Bull, and the character's civilian name is Miles, and his hero name he goes by Breach. His look is he's gonna be, you know, a teenage teenage male, African American in ethnicity. He doesn't really have a costume, but what he wears would be similar would be some of like the clothes that he had when he was in the military like experimental project. So it would be like a standard issue t shirt and camouflage pants that he wore with like combat boots. And that's just always been his identity. So he doesn't really have the need to dress flashy in a costume and that's just how he's always worn himself through like combat and with the dog tags i'll say yeah with dog tags like like over the shirt or under the shirt or mm, we'll say over the shirt okay cool cool <laughs> continuing on down our next player is gabby i think the listeners can follow the pattern so if you want to answer the questions yeah favorite superhero probably deadpool probably some of the very few comics that i've ever read in my life like i've read like brief sections from other superhero comics but deadpool was really the first one that i sat down and actually opened and read like cover to cover plus i really loved the fourth wall breaking my character is superhero named pandora but her actual name is esmir sirkesh she is the outsider from the pandora cluster and she at least in the facial region looks rather human however the big noting details is that her face and all the rest of her skin is red and her hair is stark white. Ooh. And her eyes are regular human shaped, but they are yellow in color. And instead of having eyebrows, she has tattooed, uh, I guess you could call them eyebrows, but it's like dots that are tattooed where the eyebrows should be. She enjoys human piercings, so her lip is pierced and she has human gauges because she really enjoyed the, the way that they look. She has on her body, her legs are slightly from the knee down, bent, uh, curved backwards. And on the backs of her arms and the backs of her legs, she has bone-like tendrils, I guess is the best way to describe them, that come out, kind of come out at an angle. She wears her skin-tight space suit most of the time, which is white and purple and blue, with a blue cape coming off of the back. However, she also enjoys human attire, but she is stuck in the 90s when it comes to that. The best era to be stuck in. <laughs> Nice <laughs> child. It's like all the superheroes were planning to go on a ski trip. She hasn't quite caught up yet. I like it. Sounds kind of intimidating. <laughs> so our last player for this game will be Ian. So go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Ian, playing the Doomed. In tandem with everyone else, I... Jeez. It's so hard to pick a superhero that I like. I like so many. I tend to lean towards the superheroes that actually don't have powers. They're just kind of regular humans that have honed their skills and their minds to basically be superhuman. Like Black Widow, Batman, of course. Those types of heroes are typically my favorite. Uh, can't really choose one. <laughs> <laughs> but you're playing something very different from I, that. I am playing something very different from that. I do like heroes with powers. Anyway, to go into more description, I suppose, about that. Again, I'm playing the Doomed. She... 
if we want to recall, is a shifter. She prefers to be in the form of a girl, a woman, but she can change her appearance to look more masculine. But typically, most of the time, she wears a pretty skin-tight suit. It's going to be sleeveless, but her right hand is going to have one of those fingerless gloves that kind of, it's like a cuff around your hand that your thumb pokes through. But that's going to go all the way up almost to her shoulder, but just on one hand, because, you know, she has to keep that in balance to keep things interesting for people. <laughs> She'll have a choker and it will have a gem in the middle that's blue. A lot of her gear is going to be accented in blue, including her hair. And she will also have a type of like shoulder cape slash scarf that she can use to do the whole anime thing where she wraps it around her face so she can kind of like hide herself from the world kind of a thing. Wait, which side is the scarf on? Um, it can be on any side. There oh. just will be a tail of the scarf on one side or another, just however she decides Oh, like, to... like an Assassin's Creed kind of... Yeah, kind of. thing. Yeah. Kind of chicish. In... Yeah, from Smash yeah, Bros. Yeah. Okay. It's just there for looks, flair, and so she can, you know wrap it around her face or whatever what else i believe you forgot to say her name oh yeah so her real name well what most people like her mother would call her libby um, a lot of her friends tend to call her libby but her superhero name i'm sticking with libidine even though i pronounced it technically incorrectly <laughs> as it is supposed to be pronounced libid libidine libidine in latin but I like the way Libidine sounds, and as it's just a hero's name anyway, I'm going to stick with it. So Libidine is her hero name. All right, and with that, let's get into the adventure. <clears throat> Hooray! Yay! I roll for turn order! Oh, okay. That's Seven. something I forgot to mention. There is no turn order. It's very freeform. Try to be fair and let everyone play, and I will try to direct that also, but there's no official initiative system. Okay. Oh, I might have forgotten to mention that my character is Hispanic looking. Okay. Skin tone wise. Very, very diverse. I'm glad we're not all just we are very Caucasian diverse. male you know, females. You know, human, human, alien, space matter. <laughs> <laughs> A black hole. <laughs> If, yeah, if Ryan's character is a black hole, John, then you might as well be a supernova. Yeah, that's true. At the start of session, I put one point of team into the team pool. So I have that marked down. Oh, also, just so you guys know, describe everything as you would, but the book kind of advises you to think of it in terms of looking like a comic book. So if you want to describe panels and stuff, if that's what you feel like, go for it. Okay. Panels. Yeah. This isn't live action. Uh, I'm thinking comic book movie. That's fine also, yeah. or cartoon series. It's like, it's depending on how we do it, it, it could be like one of those comic books that feels really thick, and then you open it, and like 10 of the pages are just one panel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a pop-up book. Or <laughs> pop-up book. Oh, and then yeah. I punch him, and you have to pull the tab. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't. Bah! <laughs> I can't say I've ever read a pop-up book comic book. I would, though. That'd be so <laughs> cool. No, what, are the, or what about one of those flip books? You just flip oh, yeah. it really fast and it animates. That's just a movie! That's <laughs> d, d combat. Our scene opens with a shot of the city. In the middle of the shot, there is a large building which reads Museum of Super Science. The next panel is of an explosion bursting forth from the museum. Why, why is this super science? Is there is there more science, science beyond science? science? Everything science in of comic super books heroes? is super. Or science of superpowers? I mean, powers? wouldn't it still be the Museum of Science? Yeah, no. And it just has a superhero. No, I'm studying super psychology. Exactly. <laughs> See, it's like you just... <laughs> it's better than normal psychology. Well, super, super psychology is the psychology of superheroes. There you go. Ooh. So super science it's... would be sciences involving superheroes. I still feel like it should it's be like the Museum of Science and then have a section for, for superheroes or something. The delinquent doesn't get to name. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm gonna take some graffiti. Go to your shady scrub corner. Scrub out the super part. <laughs> we cut to inside of the building. There is a man. He is probably in his late 30s or early 40s. He is Caucasian. He is wearing some bits of technology on his arms and legs, but he is wearing a spandex 
costume under that with a just so deep cut V, just all the way down to the stomach. <laughs> I hate him already. He's very toned. <laughs> nice. And he is holding a group of goers to the museum hostage using his telepathy gauntlets. Telepathy gauntlets. Telepathy gauntlets. <laughs> she I meant telekinesis gauntlets, but I'm dumb, so whatever. We'll just say she... he named them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's not very good at this whole super science thing. That's <laughs> um, why he held up everybody he has, the as he has these hostages he held that. down with his psychic powers emanating from his gauntlets. He is grabbing pieces of technology that are on display. You guys enter the scene. Please go around and well decide decide if you're going in as like just a group or if you're arriving in different ways. You are an established team. This is not your first time teaming up. So I'm gonna come in from the roof. So after defiling the sign that said super science, and I'll just say the Museum of Science, I'm gonna <laughs> sneak in the other room. I love how you're like the most anti-rebel rebel. <laughs> <laughs> how dare they say super science? Just like with white out, you're like, ha ha ha! That'll <laughs> anyway, show up! <laughs> anyway, continue. Sorry Not for helping. interrupting. So yeah, I'm just sneaking in through the, the fire exit on the roof right. to get down into the building. I'm gonna probably say, for breach, I'm gonna run full speed through the rotating door and it's just gonna explode and shatter into a million pieces and i skid to a halt dislodging tiles and creating somewhat of like a crevice in the floor and i'll just kind of wipe the rubble and glass from my shirt and just be like still gotta work on stopping i was hoping for the kool-aid man like <laughs> oh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> just woo! <laughs> i'll do that next so time hype. i smash through a wall how about that it's gotta get hype all right, I'm going to be kind of sneaking in as kind of our head of the team, our, our charging uh, leader. Has, ram. <laughs> yeah, the ram has just <laughs> burst through the door, creating a commotion. I'm going to slip in using my body transmutation. Oh, wait, did we know about the hostage situation inside of the museum? I'm assuming we did since you started with that. But. The explosion is what would have probably attracted everyone, but you're trained, so if you guys investigated okay, wait, before what just bursting in. There was an explosion at the museum I described. Oh, I missed that part. I you were too busy hostage. fuming about it being super science. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use body transmutation to kind of become almost like shadow-like. Very. that's like, my stick. Very two-dimensional. I'm going to slide across the walls, a uh, platformer or something. <laughs> and Mario. I'm going to try and just get a better Legend view of like, what's going on yeah, in the was... room. All right. Link between worlds. That's one, a good example. Yeah. Uh, the other two have introduced how they're entered. I will probably have you roll to assess the situation. Sounds good to me. Okay. I think I'm going to just sort of walk behind Breach. Just like very slowly and nonchalantly and just be like, Oh, Breach. Such an extravagant way of entering, as always. As I'm using my uh, gravity powers to kind of like clean all the debris that he just reeked. So I'm pu putting it in like a neat pile. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Also, I love that. <laughs> Since I have my alien ship, I'll probably go in through the roof with Franklin and just come up through behind him after he bursts in. You have a burst ship? in together. I'm I do have a ship. I'm jealous. Why did I have to run is it, here? Is like, it big enough for all of us? To or is like, it just you? Or is it just like your own sleek? I could probably ship. fit like one or two other people, but not a full team. Squeeze me! It, it was an alien spacecraft specifically meant for me to get the prisoner that I was trying to get. Ah, okay. I'm going to ride on that ship, <clears throat> except it's not going to be inside. I'm going to ride on the tail like Sonic. And the tornado, <laughs> and just stand on the back. <laughs> Cosmic Castaway has to be playing though when you write Cosmic it. Cosmic Castaway, yeah. Copyright. I want a Sonic Copyright. Song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't sing that. Hey, hey, hey! Thirty seconds. Thirty we have, seconds. We have thirty seconds. Okay. I thought it was ten seconds. Shh. We did like one second. <laughs> that was, either way, it's still good. So, Libidine, Libidine. Go Whatever. ahead and roll your 2d6 and add 2D6, your, your two-dimensional being <laughs> for assist the, assess the situation. <laughs> oh, good. Our DM, everyone. Nice minus job. one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a total of six minus one, so I have a five. That will be a failure. Yeah. Mark potential. <laughs> Yay, first failure <laughs> of many. Here. Potential? Yeah. Just check one off. Of many. You're going to want to be able to erase them, so don't mark it too deep. Mark, don't, don't mark it too deep. Don't mark it too deep. You better just change your fate what you did. 
just really quick. <laughs> so you aren't able to detect anything of more use than simply that this guy is here and he's clearly a supervillain. He's um, full of himself. That is also obvious. I feel like with the deepest, the deepest of V's that he has in his shirt, he needs a really good evil laugh. Perfect. Dude. I love that laugh. Uh, yeah. uh, not the one I would have picked, but I don't know if I can top that, honestly. As you all burst in, he says, Ah, a team of new superheroes. Well, you'll, you'll stand no chance against fatal attraction. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's trying not to vomit. Man down, man down. <laughs> he raises a gauntlet towards the the group that burst in through the wall, and you feel some force starting to to push against you. It's nothing overwhelming yet, but he's just kind of displaying his his control over the situation. Wait, wait, what kind of force? You said fatal attraction, so I'm immediately thinking that it's like lethal. <laughs> no, I'm thinking like you guys are going to start making out now or something. That's the... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. Just, I think it's more telekinetic than yeah, persuasive. Maybe. So how do you guys react? Hmm. What are the actions that we can do again? Can we just do anything right now? or Just describe what your character does. If I feel that a move has been triggered, I'll call for you to roll for it. Okay, well, because this would definitely be a move because I want to reverse the gravity of his pull. So basically he's pulling us towards him, but I want to reverse gravity so that it's reversing that pull. I think that would be unleash your powers, which would be a roll plus your freak. And I don't know if you have a move that changes what you do with that, but I bet you just have a high freak as uh, the Nova. I'm a freak! <laughs> All right. Um, Get your freak on. Super freak. Super freak. Super freak. Super freak. Oh, super freak. Nine plus two, that's 11. All right, that is a full success. Yay! Nice. On a 10 plus. <laughs> <laughs> on a 10 plus you accomplish whatever you were trying to do so go ahead and describe so as he's putting his hand out and i feel the slight tug but as soon as i feel that my eyes are going to glow a little bit like more of a vibrant purple and it's basically just going to not do anything all right and so, so he's you... just going to stand there with his hand looking like a moron yep which he is not happy about. Yay. <laughs> As we enter combat, I'm going to say that's the start of combat. We're going to do the when you enter battle against a dangerous foe as a team mechanic. So I'm going to start by adding two more team. After adding two team to the pool, I'm going to need your group to decide who is the leader of this combat. You want me to be the leader? I say the bull. Okay. He, he leads the charge every time. He is everyone the okay with entrance. that? Yeah. Yep. So let's go with <laughs> Make that a common theme of who can make the best entrance <laughs> is well, the leader. Like, <laughs> hey, that, I like it. Yeah. Like it. We got two people. So everyone's going to try and constantly try to one-up each other. <laughs> but then once we get into it, our entrances are going to be legendary. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> legendary. Not the actual battle. Just, just, the, yeah, just the entrance. We're like, yeah. Do oh. a superhero landing. Superhero landing. <laughs> so <laughs> unnecessary. Now that you've chosen who your leader is, does the leader have influence over every teammate? Yes. You all chose influence at the start. I believe that you have he did have influence. influence over everyone. Yeah. You influence mm. Everyone me. has influence over me anyway. So. To do drugs. No. <laughs> Sorry. I'm afraid. So, <laughs> since you have influence over everyone, we add another team to the pool. Nice. Scott, mm -hmm. please tell us out of character what your character's purpose in the fight is. What's your goal? I think... I'll bring the pain. <laughs> <laughs> bring the hurt. <laughs> I think my goal in the fight is going to be, I guess, just to stop Fatal Attraction with whatever it takes. But he's going to try to focus on not harming the civilians who are held hodges right now. So he wants to he wants to stop him, but All right. he's going to try to maybe cause not so much collateral damage. So we're going to go in a circle with everyone else. Is your purpose in the fight also to stop fatal attraction without hurting the innocents? Yeah. Yes. Is your goal the same? Mostly. Mostly. Define mostly. I want to put more precedence over saving the civilians. Okay. And I'm the opposite of that. I want to put more precedence in stopping this 
Fatal, fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction. <laughs> I got to use the names. Are close enough that we'll say yes and add the extra team. Nice. Yay. Let's add another one to the team by doing a group high five. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, but that's not a rule. <laughs> does anyone mis- jumping high C? Does anyone mistrust the leader? Not yet. No. I do. Not yet. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Um, Plot twist. Yep, not yet. Well, right. is, yeah. is that you a mechanic? Don't remove that you... a team because everyone trusts you. Got it. No, wait, can you mistrust yourself? Is that you probably could, but I don't think that his character actually does. Okay, so there's no there's no like penalties for lack of confidence. Well, there are conditions for that. For example, if you felt insecure, which is one of the conditions, you'd have a small uh, penis. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I actually kind of want to discuss that because oh, the whole kind of size, not that. <laughs> the the whole like, like doubting doubting yourself as the leader kind of thing. Not that I'm not saying like I'm going to outright doubt myself in the ability to lead the party, but. Kind of the whole backstory and motivation for the character, for me at least, is that he wants to prove that he's not just a wrecking machine, not just a weapon, but he's not sure if he can control it yet. So he, in like trying to rank, reel in his power and being able to not cause collateral damage, he's not sure if he can and might end up causing more for now, that's not going to be a mechanical unless you would honestly say your character mistrusts himself as a leader. No, no. Okay, then we don't take away that team for okay. mistrust. Just wanted to be sure. Last one. Do you guys feel your team was ill-prepared for this battle? I'm leaning towards no because no. you knew it was a fight you were heading towards. Not at all. I was ill-prepared for the revolving door, but... <laughs> Smacked you on the More like it was <laughs> ill-prepared <laughs> for you. <laughs> All right, so right now the team pool has five points in it. Remember that you can use team to bolster allies by helping and adding a plus one on their roll even after Mm. they've rolled. Or you can use team selfishly to shift your labels around even after a roll to influence the roll you made. Okay. I use all five (laughs) to tie my shoes. (laughs) Epically. (laughs) So the fight starts... Fatal Attraction sees your eyes start to glow and notices that what he's doing is not having an effect. So he fo- focuses more power on Dark Store. He is going to attempt to pin you to a wall telekinetically. Okay. You guys will all see as Dark Star starts sliding off to the side towards a wall. What happens? What does anyone do? It can be Dark Star who reacts, but it's also okay if it's someone else. I have an idea. And also, you don't have to directly respond to this, of course. you could. Someone could be sneaking over to rescue the hostages while he's distracted. Right. I do have an idea. Well, okay. and I had a quick question. Like, I partially... I kind of wanted to uh, make my character, like, partially incorporeal, as in, like, has a small ability to pass through things. Is that pushing powers too far, or is that... Um, that's not pushing powers too far. If it's fairly new, you might have to roll Unleash Your Powers as you're getting control of it. So What's your idea? Yeah. Um, so my I idea, I have psychic constructs as an ability, and the way my character is going to use that, imagine it like the Green Lantern's ring, like he can create something to s- smash people with or whatever. The way I'm going to have Libby kind of use it is by creating chains and like bindings on people at mm, first mm, okay. as a means of tying them down. Uh, crowd control type stuff. So I would like to shoot a psychic chain out towards Ooh. the uh, the guy's wrist. Fatal attraction? His, his fatally attractive gauntlets. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we just keep on making you say his name. <laughs> Fatal attraction? Fatal, yeah. Yes, mm. I don't. Yeah. It's a weird name. That I don't is, like him. That is the thing we are fighting. <laughs> it's almost like I made a joke villain to start the thing out or something. Weird. So, so that would be directly engaging a threat. Ooh. So please roll your 2d6 and add... Freak! I hope. <laughs> I, I think my only Danger. <gasps> Danger, Will okay. Robinson. Danger's pretty good. Danger yeah, zone. A 10 is a complete success. A 7 to 9 is a partial success. Okay. That's 9 and 10. Very nice. Very good. So... On a 10, pick two. Resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. 
Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. You'll get two of those. Note that because it's directly engage a threat, if you don't choose resist or avoid their evade their blows, you will also be marking a condition just like he will be. Because he's like fighting back. Yes. Okay. I suppose the most fitting thing, because it's uh, the way I'm trying to envision and describe it, is it is a psychic chain that is supposed to prevent him from moving. I suppose I would be opening up an opportunity for some of my team to be able to take him down by binding his wrist gauntlets kind of to the floor with chains. All right, so one of yours is create an opportunity for your allies. And the other one, I guess, is I'll avoid. All right. right. Dodge or whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> I'm not big. I'm, no. a, I'm a squishy. So midlane carry, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> um, go ahead and describe how that looks. I believe he's going to mark angry as his condition he takes from you doing that. Okay. So the way a lot of my magic is going to work is I have um, set some tattoos that are in different places on my body, especially on my arms. It's mostly just, it's not really pictures, it's more like script of some language, <laughs> probably devil or demonic or something um, that the succubus caretaker has written on my body. So from those, that's kind of where a lot of my powers come from. So it's gonna shoot kind of an energy looking thing from the letters on, on my arm. And it's gonna shoot out, it's, it's gonna be probably just a blue kind of teal color. And it's gonna just kind of look like a chain. I kind of get to decide whatever it looks like because it's created from my mind. <laughs> So it's going to be just a chain with, you know, a shackle that locks onto his wrist and connects to the floor. Oh, nice. So a blue tealish chain is now connected. To so it's, wrist. it's something visible. So like the rest of us can, can see, see it. it. You okay. guys can yeah. see it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> he lashes out angrily towards you, but you evade and resist the blows. He shouts out, nothing's tying me down and starts slamming telekinetically against just surfaces. You managed to withstand any force he's throwing at you, but suddenly a large wave of telekinetic force hits the ceiling, large cracks form in the roof, uh -oh. and a chunk of debris starts falling towards some of the civilians. Oh no! Okay. What do you do, someone? Well, I think on that note, seeing the debris falling towards the civilians, I am going to use one of the character moves that I have. It's called There When It Matters. And I'm going to intentionally like throw myself towards the hostages and defend them from the debris falling on them. Do you want me just to read like the description of that move? Sure, that would be helpful. Okay, it says here, when you defend someone, you... Uh, on a hit, you can hold one instead of choosing from the list. Spend your hold when they are in danger, later to arrive on the scene ready to help. All right, so hold is a mechanic that essentially means, in video game terms, it's essentially that you have like a stack of something that you can use later. Oh, okay. So it's instead of having to immediately use the effects, you can hold one and then use it later. Got it, okay. Essentially. So you're going to defend them. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a move that changes what you defend with, roll plus savior. Okay, yeah, it doesn't change anything. So oh, that wow. is a nine. nine, and I got a plus one, so that's a ten. All right, Love very good. Ten. Let's nice. go. On a hit, you keep them safe and choose one. Add team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. You don't have a condition, so Pick that one's that one. off the table. You shall take influence over the civilian. That's kind of actually what I was thinking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, Sorry, the, not so dramatically. <laughs> the book recommends you be saving like a group of people that, and you take influence over them. You might just describe someone important or interesting in the crowd that you happen to save and take influence over that person specifically. Okay. Um, so if you want to come up with someone, or I, I could probably come up with someone if you're stuck for an idea. I'll say among the people who were hostages against fatal attraction, I'll say one of them would just be like maybe a security guard or like the front desk clerk of the museum that was directly under a big piece of debris that was falling and they would be the ones that you know I blocked the debris from so the influence that I'll use towards that is you know after I like shield the debris I'll kind of say to them you know we're gonna we're gonna take it over from here 
get everybody out as quickly as you can. Sounds good. So do you want to throw any more flavor on the defense or are you good? I'll, just for flavor, I'll say like with the debris falling, I kind of like brace myself over the people who were directly threatened by it. So it lands on me and not them, but it clearly doesn't hurt. Cause... Can I interject before you do that? Yeah, go for yes. it. Yes. So I have for one of my abilities is a mind blast and I'm going to take that to assume that it means that I'm able to use my mind to like force things away. Ooh. Ooh. And so since I also have the ability to fly, I'm like surveying everything from up above when I see the ceiling start to crack. Mm -hmm. And so I fly just below it to the where I'm angled to it and I use the mind blast to push all of the glass towards the walls. Not really caring about the consequences of what happens to anything that's in this room. Very cool. Would you say you are defending also? Is that what you're trying to do there? Is it a... Yes, I'm pushing it away from the crowd. All right. So how about you also roll me your 2d6 plus your savior? Well, you got a 5 plus 2, so that's a 7. My savior's only 0. Oh, I was like, it's superior. Never mind. Now, this is where we could use team point. If you describe how you help, you can take a team... Remove a team from the pool to add a plus one to her roll one per everyone who helps. I'm focused on the guy, so don't look for help from me. <laughs> if people want to use team to help her support, then that this would be the time. Help her defend, that this would be the time. We should do it. We've got so many. If not, she'll mark potential and I will describe what happens. I mean, I like the idea of using a team. I don't know if I would directly use it because I was already like in the fray shielding people from falling debris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was going to keep my focus on the guy. I guess I'm trying to think what my character do, and I will note that if you're the only one who helps, it still won't push her to a success. That's true. Is, is that something that I can help with even though I already initiated the defense? Yes, you could. So if two okay. people help her, it'll be a pass it'll be a partial success. Okay. Oh, well, take two well, of if that's if that's the case then I will indeed because I think as my character I'm more of a uh, strategist of the group because I'm trying to make I'm trying to look at all angles instead of just focusing on one single angle of the fight. So I think in seeing him pushing me back a little after that I will be focusing on everything and I will see the debris like the glass flying towards whatever direction she pushed nah, she pushed it as so mm -hmm. as i see them like the glass kind of heading in towards a general direction or is it like is it pushing away you need help with yeah it's pushing the glass away okay blast it blast it with your lasers uh, with my gravity lasers <laughs> <laughs> I will begin to help her push it away with the gravity, and then I'll yell out to be like, Breach! Help me with this! Okay, and then I'll like... Or like, Breach! Assistance! <laughs> <laughs> So is, is it is it just mainly glass or is it mostly... She's dealing with the glass. You dealt with like the rock debris. She's dealing with the glass. Okay. So I guess like as the sequence went, it kind of like crumbled first and then the glass shattered. Okay. Should I help like directly with pushing the glass aside or should I like try... Well, let me ask you this, Eric. It, it would me describing it as me helping be like hurrying the people out of the way in That's case some totally of it falls. Fine. Okay. Because I don't... I don't know if I can do a whole lot like moving the glass. Yeah, that, that totally counts. Okay, right. so... Because I was going to say, I don't really know what your powers do, so I can't really know how you would help. I'm just saying, like, assistance. Help. Well, and it's, yeah. it's yeah. interesting because <laughs> it says under the description for the bull's abilities that you're just really powerful and incredibly strong. So just describe what they look like. So I don't even know what they look like yet. You could do the Hulk thing where you, like, clap your hand and a shockwave goes out. You're just like... I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think for this instance, what I'll do is I, I'm going to kind of pick up two of the patrons, the hostages, a lady and an elderly guy who are straggling behind and like get the rest of them out of the way. So if any remaining debris does fall, that they're, you know, safely out of the way and headed towards somewhere less dangerous. So that will push Pandora's score to a 7, which is a partial success. On a 7 to 9 with Defend, you succeed, but it costs you. Expose, choose whether to expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Expose myself to danger. Oh, I was going to say escalate. <laughs> As Fatal Attraction has been fighting with Libidine, he raises another his other gauntlet and immediately slams Pandora hard onto the ground. Ooh, ouch. I'm going to make a hard move here and say, how about you roll me um, take a powerful blow, which will be roll 2d6 at any conditions you have marked. Nine. 
seven. This is all one. One, you lash out verbally, comma, provoke a teammate to foolhardy action, comma, or take advantage of your influence to inflict a condition. Two, you give ground, your opposition gets an opportunity, or three, you struggle past the pain, mark two conditions. Ooh, Ooh. that's a hard choice. What was the second one again? You give ground, your opposition gets an opportunity. Hmm. Let's do that one. All right, so you are thrown to the ground. It doesn't really hurt you, but it's, you know... Knocks the wind out. It knocks the wind out of you. It's with enough force that the, the ground kind of shakes, and Libidine is concentration is broken by the, you hitting the ground and the, the ground shaking all of it together. The chain disappears. He begins to lift up a pile of technology he has grabbed and begins levitating towards a window that has been shattered in the conflict. He's what trying do you to do? He's, he's trying to escape? Is he just getting the stuff he stole out or is he? Yes. Okay. Now for like getting his attention is like what sort of move would that be? You could do provoke someone, which would be you provoke someone susceptible to your words, say what you're trying to get them to do and roll plus superior and you could try and force him to do something. That's probably the best move for this, but remember you don't have to like be looking to perform moves. You can just describe what you do. Okay. So I, I want to provoke him. All right. So when you uh, provoke someone susceptible to your words, say what you were trying to do, get them to do out of character, then roll plus superior, or if you have something else. So roll your 2d6 plus superior. Nine. On a seven to nine, they can choose instead. Oh, you didn't say what you wanted him to do. Oh, I, I, uh, so I'm really just gonna say, hey, sexy, where do you think you're going? <laughs> so, out of character, what are you trying to get him to do? Just turn around and focus on me and not leave the building. Um, on a seven to nine, they can instead choose one. They stumble, you take plus one, plus one forward against them. They err, you gain a critical opportunity. Or they overreact, and you gain influence over them. So which of those do you choose? Uh, I'm looking for the overreact. You want him to overreact? Yes, I want, I want, to, like, and I want him to be focused on me. All right. Then, as he's levitating out, you say this. He turns and sees you and says, Are you making fun of me? You're just a pathetic teenager. What can you do? He immediately drops the tech. It falls to the ground because he was lifting it up. Throws a large wave of telekinetic force at you and just launches you backwards hard into a wall. I think you are also going to roll take a powerful blow. So roll plus any conditions you have marked. That's a three. So on a three, you stand strong, mark potential as normal, and say how you weather the blow. And then you will take influence over him, which is the react mechanic, overreact mechanic. I was about to say that I was just gonna do a sexy eyebrow raise in his direction and just kind of take the blast. But then again, I don't know if my character has eyebrows because he sucks in all light, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to stick with that, though. I'm going to go with a sexy eyebrow raise and just gaze deeply into his eyes while completely ignoring the blow. Is it like just a raise or is it like the eyebrow waggle? Ooh. Very very subtle eyebrow waggle. Here comes the smolder. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I like the I like the thing that you like you can't even see what you're doing. You're just standing there and you're like, mm-hmm, he sees this. It's <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> So now you have influence over him. This means that what you say matters to him. And also mechanically, it means that you get a plus one to any actions you take against him until you lose influence over him. Okay. The rest of you see your friend, you know, stall him temporarily. What do you do? Okay, I think uh, after my move to save the civilians, I kind of want to flip the script and directly engage the enemy now. All right. Can uh, I do that as well? Like, at the same time, or is... We can just roll them, essentially, at the same time, unless you're just, like, helping or something. Okay. There's a couple ways. How about you guys just describe what you're thinking, and then we'll decide on the rolls after we know what you're doing. Okay. Because I, I just wanted to engage him in any way that I could. You both just want to really... Just kind of lay into it. Yeah. Well, I've got oh, a I don't little know. more... I guess description on, on what I want to do because I want to use the other one of my marked abilities and for the bull this this ability named is actually uh, pretty humorous because it's called in a china shop mm -hmm. so when I directly engage a threat I can cause significant collateral damage to my environment and, and choose an additional option even on a miss. In what way are you causing collateral damage when you engage him? Well I think with him with 
Oh man, now I'm forgetting his name. Fatal, fatal attraction. attraction with fatal attraction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, attacking both Esmir and Franklin. It's gonna make me. Well, and I did choose the superhero named Nix. Nix. Sorry. Use the superhero. Okay, name. I'm gonna put that next to your name so I don't forget it. With him, you know, attacking Nix and Esmir directly and, you know, kind of hurting them, that's going to make me angry. So I'm going to just kind of like clench both fists, get into like a charging stance and just just shake my head and say like, oh, that's it. And I'm going to burst forward and it leaves a crater from where I was standing and I'm just running full speed at Fatal Attraction. And you're doing? And I want to do, I guess, two things in the same thing. Because I need to charge, but I want to do a move right after the charge. Because that's what my character does, apparently. Yeah. Is store charges after a roll, and then I can burn those in order to do something. Yep. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. So... Go ahead and roll your 2d6 plus whatever it says to see if you get your charges. All right, it says roll plus conditions you currently have marked. So you have no conditions marked, so just roll and see what you get on 2d6. Okay. I will definitely have conditions after this. <laughs> it's a good chance. <laughs> no, no, it's guaranteed. I'll have one condition. You could get a 10, and you might not get any. Oh, yeah, on 7 to 9, yeah. That's true. You roll 10, 11, or 12. All right, so I got a 7, so that means I get to mark one condition... And I hold three charges or three burns. Yep. So I don't know if you want me to mark a condition you myself. Choose which condition you feel is appropriate. Okay. I'm going to mark angry then because he just hurt like three of our teammates. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mark that. So that's that a negative two to comfort or support or pierce the mask. And so you're less good at reading people or helping people because you're just angry. Yeah. So I'm going to, my kind of focus is now solely on him. And since that is the case, it says that I'm going to use Reality Storm, which is you channel your destructive burst into your powers and spend one to directly engage the threat. I will not burn a second one. So there's going to be collateral damage. Oh boy. From this burst. <laughs> Big boom. <laughs> <just gonna> destroy <laughs> this place. That's what I wanted to happen. It's just like we defeat him, but everything gets destroyed so, in the process. We're going to briefly cut to Fatal Attraction still focused on Nyx. Nyx took influence on him and avoided the blow. So Nyx did this sexy eyebrow waggle and Fatal Attraction is just going to say, you've got some good moves, kid. If you worked with me, I think we could really get all of the, the attention we wanted. And then it comes flying at him these two other heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to do like a combo attack with you. So like describe how you're going to attack him since you went first. And I'm going to describe how I follow up with your attack. Okay. So with me running full bore at him first, before I describe this, Eric, do I need to roll since I'm engaging him? You will roll your 2d6 plus danger. Okay. Well, my danger is plus three. So <laughs> here comes the boom. <laughs> Ready or not. And you get an here extra one. The boom from the start. Yeah. Oh, that's an eight plus three. So... All right, uh, that's so because you got to pick, you get an extra one, on a 10 plus for you, pick three. Resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. You get three of the four. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. I think I want to surprise him for one of them, because he's going to get... Hit. Sounds good. From out of nowhere. From out of nowhere, yeah. Directly watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, oh god. Ding, okay. ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> In case you needed to remember Here comes him snaking and watch out, watch out. So yeah, oh. I'll, I'll uh, surprise him because he's going to get hit with a ton of bricks seemingly out of nowhere. Creating also an opportunity for oh. Dark Star's attack. Then I think I'm going to take the last one as resist or avoid any retaliation that he has against me. Sounds good. So how are you? Oh, okay. The hitting? description. Yeah. So with how like I started, I kind of like lower my shoulder and then burst forward, which made the crater. Okay. And I come, I'm coming at him full speed. The way that it looks when I'm using my power is like my body just kind of wells up and it, it doesn't necessarily glow, but it kind of emanates pressure, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then when I contact like another surface or a being, I guess in this case, it'll create like a concussive blast, not something like explosion or like blast radius, but something that makes an audible like concussion in the air. And that, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be the force of my power, like unleashing on, you know, my target. Mm -hmm. So I'll run forward to him, lower my shoulder, and then just like lay into him with that concussion force, I guess, from the, from my character. Okay. And so sorry to interrupt, but one of the things is when a villain gets a condition, they immediately get to act on the emotion they marked. Okay. So you'll still get to do your thing, but I'm going to interrupt and real fine. quick. 
I marked afraid. <laughs> That's fair. I would be too. Which means I'm going Wait, to... Wait, which angle is he coming at, though? Because if, so if he's focused on my character, <laughs> and, and where, where are they in relation to him? Like, which way is he facing... Because if he doesn't see this coming, I don't know if he would be afraid. Well, he's been marked as afraid from getting, like, after the hit happens. Oh, oh, okay. Also, he only has a, li a limited number of them because he's a weaker villain, and I don't feel that insecure is as appropriate as afraid. Oh my god! Are you kidding me with that deep of V? He is not insecure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, is because he's very focused on his appearance, insecure is one of the emotions you guys could afflict on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's Why trying to he... compensate! Uh, <laughs> no one pierced the mask. No one tried to figure out what he, who he was. Dang it. Oh. So he is... Ooh, this should be interesting for description. He, after landing from this, is afraid that more is coming his way, which is true. So he starts using telekinetic powers to throw up all sorts of technology and stuff in, in his way, just trying to protect himself from what's coming next. So he's just throwing it at random? Like, essentially just like creating a like, wall in front of him, yeah. Okay. So you're up. Okay. You're going to be creating damage anyway, right. so I, it's, a, it's okay. <laughs> right. So go ahead and start describing, then roll. It's gonna be plus danger unless that changes what you use. It does. It to changes freak. it to freak, yeah. All right, so then you'll, when you'll roll, you'll be rolling 2d6 plus your freak. Right. Okay. So I guess as he lands and he's starting to like try and protect himself, I want to create basically a gravity well on his location so that everything in his vicinity gets pulled directly towards him, <laughs> oh. including all the collateral that that breach just created, <laughs> and probably a little bit more of the building will like pull into itself. Just as long oh. as my ship isn't in that vicinity. Oh. I don't oh. know. <laughs> it's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> if you roll under six, six. Yeah. where did you park? <laughs> <is the question. laughs> where did you park? <laughs> In the gravity well zone. <laughs> oh no. Yep. The, the five plus two, seven. Seven. You succeed. Yeah. Partially. With, yeah, partially. <laughs> Not the gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> On a seven to nine, pick one. Resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Mm, I'm going to say on this point that I'm probably... Since I'm kind of angry at him, I'm going to focus solely on him. So I'm going to inflict fear or whatever the other surprise, one was. Surprise or et cetera, fear. Et cetera. Yeah, All right. I'll say fear because he knew something was coming. He just didn't know what. The strike would have put him at his last condition. And if a villain takes a another an additional condition when they don't have any left, which impress, surprise, or frighten the ex would do, yeah. he's out of the fight. Yee nice. All right. Yes. So please describe to the audience your victory over Fatal Attraction. Remember that you're not trying to kill him. You might have, yeah, no. but you're not trying to. Right. I was kind of picturing like the com classic comic sort of slash anime thing where he's like completely sort of like bloodied, but just knocked out. Where he's got broken bones here and there, but he's definitely not dead. He's just right. like, oh, oh, so oh God. God. Collapses in on him. Yeah. Um, because you did not choose to avoid or resist their blows, I will say that at, as you're, as it's all coming in on him, he tries to just throw up as much force as he can. You are struck by some of the debris he does manage to launch backwards, and you're going to have to mark another condition. Okay. Mm, I will say guilty. Because <laughs> now I see all the science that I have destroyed. <laughs> oh. all, of the super, all of the super All of the super science in my wake. I'm like, what have I done? Especially I'm, with all the news you Properly made it the museum of science. I'm a damage. super science. I'm a doctor studying super psychology. Bloody heroes. Now no one can pick up the Destroy super science towns. museum t-shirts and mugs. Yeah. <laughs> Not the gift shop. Including the gift shop. <laughs> All those knickknacks flying in his face. As a final goodbye to him, I want to use body transmutation to become sexier than him. Uh, battling his insecurities. <laughs> yes, he's the final. You defeat. have the right to remain sexy. 